Um, Emma, congratulations. I thought you did, wow, an outstanding job. And before we Thank just, you. you know, talk about the film, I want to ask you, what do you think it is about this era that, you know, people love, but just make such great fodder for films? The golden age? Um, I think that, well, first of all, they made a lot of really great movies in that era, so there's always, you know, you're able to look back at really incredible actors and, and um, stories that were told in the 40s. But I think there's also something about the way everybody dressed, the way everybody spoke, the fact that everything kind of had that mid-Atlantic accent, and it sort of just feels like this gauzy, removed time um, that feels kind of untouchable now. Plus, the girls were, were broads, and I love that. Yeah, um, yeah, let's... They and funny and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about this character, Grace. If I want to know what kind of, you know, before you even got into the, you know, you read the script and you're like, wow, cool role, you know. But did you go back and watch old films of women that played these kinds of broads? Or well, how did you kind of prep to play Yeah, it? but, I mean, Grace isn't really one of them. Grace is kind of just like a, you know, underneath it all, a... a desperate for love and, and for attention um, and wanted to be a star and that didn't work out and is now you know right right at the bottom of the uh, money rung and and is having to kind of depend on a really dangerous guy to take care of her so it's not she's no uh, she's no Betty Davis you know um, but I did I mean I, I've I'm a fan of, of speaking of Betty Davis but Betty Davis and Katherine Hepburn and Lauren Bacall, so I had seen those movies, but I didn't really watch many gangster movies um, just because of the violence. Mm -hmm. um, so ironically, I'm not a huge, you know, gangster movie buff. No. It's um, not really that ironic. Yeah, yeah well, okay. That's, What's ironic about it? Nothing. <laughs> um, but putting on those clothes, yeah. the hair, the makeup, I mean, really? And you had to wear a corset as yeah. well? Mm -hmm. Whoa, I mean, you're tiny weenie, like, really? Oh, well, I'd be yeah, up, except for I'm, I'm like this. So yeah, maybe we go like that, which was appreciated. <laughs> To put all that stuff on. I mean, you're you're a Revlon spokesperson. I mean, to, the makeup. I, uh, tell me just about the process of getting ready to play that look. Lots and lots of makeup to cover up the freckles and to uh, red lips and eyebrows and all of that. It was fun because you know I, I am interested in in um, in that. So it was it, that was a fun part of the process. Did you keep any of those dresses? No, I couldn't fit into those things. Are you kidding me? The red one is. I couldn't fit into that. That's all corset. Whoa. It's all corset. Gorgeous. Really yeah, gorgeous. It's really, really great. Let's talk about your testosterone-filled set here. Yeah. <laughs> um, my gosh, what an amazing cast. Uh, i got to start with Sean Penn. Yeah. To work opposite somebody like that, yeah. pinching yourself? It's pretty amazing. He's, he's, a, he, he's one of the, the greatest actors alive, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, felt pretty, felt pretty lucky to get to witness that. What do you learn uh, working opposite somebody like that? Or do you? I don't know, but you got to take something. I don't know, because it just kind of, he completely transforms. So it's, I mean, you learn that there are people that have the ability to truly just be completely someone else. Um, I don't know what that teaches me, um, other than, you know, awe. But yeah. uh, Ryan Gosling, who of course we know you have chemistry with, like Crazy Stupid Lot, I mean, amazing. So to be able to work with him and a movie like this? Yeah, is not as funny as Crazy Stupid Love. Um, but it was really, it was, it was great to do something else. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, he was just saying, I was just talking to him that, you know, it was hard for the two of you to kind of keep straight faces because mm -hmm. you're used to that comedic, you know. Yeah. How, how do you kind of change gears and act with somebody when you know you've got that background with someone? Mm -hmm. you know? you, you, like, just by trying to do it over and over again. It's not really um, the easiest thing to slip into a different dynamic with someone that you know, yeah. which is interesting because I had never really worked with someone again. Um, so it was, it was kind of, you know, learning, learning how your dynamic shifts from one thing to another is kind of interesting. I was always wondering, you know, when you were a little girl and, and you maybe you watched a movie or saw an actor or somebody, yeah. what was it or who was it that made you decide, this is what I want to do for my living? Was there something that sparked you? Um, there were a few things. There was SNL and um, The Jerk and Les Mis, 
Well, that was the first play I saw. Um, so that was a big thing. Uh, and then there was my first school play, which was No Turkey for Perky, which is a classic. Um, it's written by Albie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, it's about a turkey. It's a Thanksgiving play. It was pretty great. I really, I really enjoyed it, and it made me realize that I loved, I loved getting to perform. Yeah. You of course reunite with uh, Ruben Fleischer, who you worked with on Zombie Land. What was it that he brought to the table for this? That you know, obviously, such a diverse, different films. But um, what was it to reunite with him and, and to make a film like this with him? Well, it was really great, and he had such a passion for for gangster movies and for this story and um, and what this could be. And then visually, he's just brilliant. So it was all kind of combination of of that. It was um, it was really great to work with them again. It must have been so cool time. to be on these sets and see them recreated. What yeah. was it like, you know, especially like the the um, the place where you guys have your the dancing and the meals and all that. I just can't remember right. the name of the club, but wow, like it's like walking back really into Slapsy Maxies, the club. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, it's like walking back into the 40s. You walk in, it's completely cigarette smoke and, uh, you know, girls dancing and little gold lame tops and, um, champagne flutes and you're really kind of transported back uh, which was amazing because it's been a long time since I was you know a kid yeah in the 40s. back in the 40s yeah. exactly I know yeah. it has been a few years uh, yeah. next next up from you we're gonna hear your voice in a film called the crudes which I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to what's it like for you to, to do the voiceover and and not have to worry about what you look like and all that and that what was that process like for you well I'm t you're totally in character because they're they're taping you, they're filming you um, while you're recording so they can animate the character. So, I mean, you're still, you're still playing the character. Um, but the fun thing is you can go as over the top as you want, which is always my dream, uh, to not have to rein it in. So, <laughs> so that was really great. Plus, she's a cave girl. So I just really went batshit crazy. Bat poop crazy. We can use batshit in Canada. Great. You know? Of course we can. Batshit. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you work? Did you work alone in this one, or did you get to play off anybody? Yeah, I mean, there was one time that I recorded with Ryan Reynolds, who's in it, uh, the other Canadian Ryan. <laughs> I've worked with both of them twice, which is a little bit strange. The Canadian Ryans. Um, one time we recorded together, but for the most part, it was like two and a half year process where you go in for a couple hours every couple months, and you record on your own, which is crazy to see it finally all come together and everyone's you know layered on top of each other. Well, we look forward to that. You, like I say, you did a wonderful job in this. Congratulations. It was Thank so you. great to see you in this type of role. And uh, we'll take you in Canada anytime. We will adopt you. Thank you. Now that you've worked with the both Ryans. I love Canada. Anytime we will have you. Thank you Thank so much. You. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Thank Emma. Thank you so much. <laughs>